What's up everyone, it's Josh here from the Architecture Student Blog and today's video I show you how to turn your architecture portfolio into a website. As you might have seen in one of my previous videos here, how to get a job in architecture, one of the key things that you can do to make sure that your portfolio actually gets seen is make it easy for the employer and one of the ways to do that is to take your portfolio and put it all online so that they can access it within the click of a button within an email which would might get you that one step closer to getting an interview. Right, let's get into the video. So to start, you're going to go to Wix.com. You will need to sign up for the website. It is free, there is no charge, and you're just going to click Create a New Site. That's going to take you to this page here where it's going to give you a load of templates to choose from based on the, what you're looking to design. I chose Portfolio and CV. That's going to give you an option of to choose a template yourself or whether they answer some questions and they will provide you with a series of potential options. I always like to just go through the options myself I don't really know what I want until I see it. As you can see here, I think there's about eight pages of various different templates. A few caught my eye. I mean, they're all very varied dependent on what you're doing. The graphic designer one sort of stood out to me a little bit. The architecture portfolio, ironically, wasn't actually fantastic, I didn't think. Um, the only thing to bear in mind as well is that some of these some of these templates are based on businesses, not necessarily just showing a portfolio of work. Um, but feel free to scroll through, have a look at the ones that take your fancy. As you can see here, the architecture firm one straight away caught my eye, but the actual content on the website I didn't think was fantastic. It was quite a nice looking website, all, all in one singular page, certainly makes it a lot easier. Um, but I actually ended up choosing a slightly different one. Um, as you can see here, just looking at a few of the various different options, there are so many. Um, but the one that I actually ended up going with is the one here that just said graffiti artist. As you scroll down, there's just a clear showcase of the various different projects, a little about section, and then a contacts form at the bottom. I just thought that was really simple, really easy to maneuver. With Wix, everything is editable. There are various different components that you can change that open other pop-out windows where you can change the font, the font size, all the various different text editing options that you'd expect. The reason I chose Wix, there are various others available, but I do just find it the most intuitive and easy to use. As you can see, you can change the page background. As well, you'll see there's menus and pages. That shows you all the various different components within the website. These are anchors, so what actually happens is when they click on a component at the top, it will take them down to the various section within the website, so it's very easy to use. As you can see, loads of different options. You can change the, the theme of the website. If you want to change all of the colors in one go, you can change the various types of text um, and there are so many different options far too many for me to go through just in one video but yeah that's what I've decided to use as well as the Wix app market which is it which is fantastic because these are third-party apps that you can introduce into the website to give it something a little bit different so first thing that I wanted to do was just change the page background it was a little bit too industrial for my liking um, to do that I used a website called Unsplash which is basically free to use um, with credit images uh, downloaded one of the ball ring as a West Midlands boy got to have the ball ring in the background there just a nice little modern image just to get a bit of architecture in there straight away. Then I just went through, changed the remainder of the images on the website. The next couple were actually photographs that I've taken myself. Um, you don't have to use photos that you've taken yourself if it's not the kind of thing that you're into, but I just thought it'd be something, an interesting thing perhaps to mention if it came up in the discussion. Um, again, the images that I ended up choosing, this one here is a little bit too industrial and a bit abstract, so I went back and chose one that I took of Liverpool Docks. Um, trying a few options out here as you can see it loaded a couple onto the website it, you, it is really easy to use I, I won't go through all the various different options but you quite simply just drag and drop the images that you want to upload as site files and they stay within Wix then um, so they're files for you to use as you'll see in this menu here you have got the media from Wix but I always like to use my own and then these are called my site files which are images that I have uploaded myself I haven't shown the process just because this video is going to be long enough as it is but it just gives you an idea of the, the things that you can do with Wix um, if you wanted to really explore the various different options and add some of your own perhaps drawings or even some of your own photography work. So as you'll see I end up going for a nice image of London that I take had taken from one of my visits. I would just like to clarify I am not 
a web developer, nor do I claim to be. I am self-taught, which is why I'm only showing you this through Wix. If you are a web developer, web designer watching this video, please don't ridicule me. It's just a means to an end that means that hopefully it's gonna give more architecture students an opportunity to get a job because it's just gonna make their portfolio that much easier to access. Anyway, back to the video. Then I just started looking at the about section, just adding my own text. Again, I have to admit for the purpose of this YouTube video, I haven't spent a massive amount of time on the content of the website. It's just something to show you how easy it is to do and how you can pull it all together. Just explain a bit about myself, saying the university that I've graduated from, I graduated with a distinction, just wanted to make them aware of that. Uh, and just saying th something along the lines of, I'm looking for an opportunity to join an as aspiring practice to develop and grow my own skills again nothing too formal not physically asking for a job but just sort of making it clear exactly what this website's for and what it's about um and and you know you can put whatever you want in here um i, I make reference to just having a look at the projects and the portfolio of work to make you know to encourage them to look through the work that i've produced uh, the one thing here that i don't think i've put on there is just to say that cvs are available upon request CVs can contain personal information, so I wouldn't necessarily be posting it online. Um, again, you'd also like to know whether people are interested. No, I did cover it. There it is. Well done. Well done, Past Josh. You did actually cover that. Um, again, just saying use the email below, and then there's just a little contacts form at the bottom there, so that if they do want to contact you, to be quite honest, I can't imagine this would ever be used, but it's just interesting if somebody wants to contact you, it will link back to the email address that you've signed up to Wix with um, so you'll always be aware if anybody's trying to send you an email again it's not necessarily that it's going to be used but I do have to say it does look like a smart little feature at the bottom of the website um, again just changing the footer here just customizing the design and there is far too much that you can do with Wix for me to go into every single little bit of detail that's possible but yeah it just gives you a good idea of what you can do with the website and, and to be quite honest you know as a landing page for a website it's not over complicated it's not difficult to navigate it's very clear what can and can't be done and uh, yeah it just gives the, the potential employer an opportunity to see a little bit more about you and to be quite honest so the next bit and probably the most time consuming and arduous process was adding the projects to the website. Um, again, similar to what I'd said previously, all I did was upload the images from my portfolio into the site file section. Um, as you can see, you can completely change the design of it yourself. So when you click on or hover over onto one of the projects, it actually gives you a title. So you can have the titles of your projects as you hover over and click on them. I mean, that is how customizable this website is. I think that's a great feature so that people can almost get a bit of a glimpse of what the project's going to be about before they open it. Um, as you can see here, just completely deleting all of the photo files from the website that was the stock images so that I could add my own. Just click add media, add image, and then I'd already uploaded the images to the website just to save a bit of time. But again, you just click add media and then the images are ready to go. As you can see, you've got a title and a description. The title is what will come up when they hover over, so make sure that you haven't missed that out and it's not just named as a random JPG or main image Josh as this one is, um, or final, 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 final render as it normally would be. So I'm just adding all of the individual images for the projects, the main ones that I think sell the project itself so that when they click it, grabs the person's attention and then obviously I will have comp I will have secondary images that will add to that when they click on the individual project page and it takes them to more information about that particular project. I'll just speed up the next bit for you because I literally just repeated the process for every single one of the projects that I've got. As you can see, just add media, find the image that you want to use for the main header image. There's me changing the titles just so that all of those are set up and ready to go. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That sets up the main home home page for the projects gallery that we've got there. As you can see, as I mentioned before, the layout didn't quite work, so I went back and had to adjust it. I found because most of my images were portrait, you can actually go into the customized layout settings and you can change it from horizontal to vertical, which helped out massively. Um, you'll see me doing that here, as well as just increasing the size of the tiles to make sure that they're readable when you open the first home page of the website. Just gonna stop the video there for a second. I know what you might be thinking, Josh, you're going way too quick for me to keep up. What I will say is, 
Don't worry, take your time, get to know Wix at your own speed, don't try and force things, just get to know it yourself. I, com I was completely self-taught, it did take a while. Next, I actually added some concept projects. These are made up projects that I've done f through my own briefs, just from home. They are concepts, they are made up, they're just things that I've found precedent imagery of online or things that I like the look of and I've decided to model them um, and produce some 3D imagery. I think what this does, especially if you know the kind of practices that you're looking to work for, obviously I work, work for a residential practice and that's the kind of thing that I wanted to do. So I'm going to produce some images of residential projects to say actually these are the design skills that I have based on the work that you are doing. As you can see here, obviously each project has its own uh, individual page. It's so when they click on the image in the main gallery they can see some more about that project this one here as you can see I'm just pulling together the web page for the architectural placebo which is my main project my feature project um, again the same process just delete the majority of the stock images that are on there and then from that point then just add my own add some of my own text uh, and that's pretty much it the process was then repeated, this time for my dissertation project. And as you can see, it's very easy, very intuitive. You just simply add the images, drag and drop where you want them to sit. I didn't spend too much time adding things like text with this particular one. I think at the end of the day, you know, when you work in the world of architecture, the main thing people are going to be paying attention to is the quality of the images that you produce. Enough text that it doesn't look a bit bland and stark, but still enough that it's not going to take too long for somebody to read because I think at the end of the day they probably just won't. Next it was on to adding some of my technology module. I think this is something really important to add onto a website if you have done a technology module as part of your undergraduate or master's studies definitely add that potentially as an individual section I think it's something that would certainly catch a potential employer's eye because at the end of the day they're going to want to actually see what technical knowledge you've got and that the things that you're designing can actually stand up. One of the key things to know is that you need to set these projects up as sub pages. As you can see here, each project is a sub page. It just needs to be renamed so that when anybody hovers over the project's link at the top of the page, these individual titles will come up. So whilst you could have project one, project two, if you didn't want to go into too much detail, I always think it is nice just to have uh, a written heading of what the what the page is actually about. I think it's just something again that just looks a lot more professional uh, and is going to make you stand out. And then, as you can see, when I go into the preview, when I hover over the project bar, it has all of the titles of the various projects. I click on one and it takes me straight there. Really useful to have. You know, the main gallery one gives them a snapshot into all the projects, but actually having the title bar helped a lot. I didn't like the orange, so what I did is went back into my themes and just changed the theme so it had a bit of a yellow on there. As you'll see here, when I hover over it now, it comes up yellow, which I think just looks a little bit smarter. Again, all of these are in interchangeable you can pick your own colors you don't have to it doesn't have to be based on a particular theme the yellow just worked for me and I thought it looked nice um, so yeah that's pretty much the menu bars all set up now next it's just adding links to the gallery page that we spoke about so as you can see now I've got the projects pages set up I can then go back into the main gallery on the home page and just link that back to whichever project is relevant on the page as you can see here you just click simply click the link button it will ask you what you want it to link it to whether it's a web address or you just simply click on page and click from the scroll down menu to choose the relevant project it really is as simple as that uh, it's why I like Wix so much everything's just set up ready to go it makes your life a hell of a lot easier I think I probably spent about two hours putting this website together now like I say I am not a professional web designer but it certainly serves a means to an end which means that your potential employer can scroll through and see exactly what your projects are about I have to say I think it looks fairly professional especially when it's for a student website you know go in the extra mile just to make it look smart for a portfolio page it's certainly better than just sending an email with a 15 megabyte portfolio that's really difficult to download at least hopefully this will get you noticed but also show off the skills that you've got if you can design a website like this I think straight away the employer is going to think you know what this person's definitely got some form of design flair and he's showing willing to go out there and really make his, his or her work get noticed 
Next, as you'll see here, just adding the concept projects. Again, can't reiterate how important I think these are. You don't need to put a lot of detail, just put sort of concept proposal and what inspired you for the project. Even if it's just a single image, it's still gonna have its own page just so it stands out and people can find out a little bit more. I can't stress enough the importance of these concept projects. It's something that I've never actually seen anybody else do before unless they've worked obviously at a previous practice where they can bring some examples of the, the things they've done there. But actually, not only is it going to help develop your skills in the particular area of architecture that you're looking to join, so in the instance of the video here, some residential architecture, they're actually really fun to do. It's nice to actually create your own brief, not worry about what your tutors are going to think and just do something a little bit different. I love doing these concept projects. Obviously working in practice, it almost gives me a chance to live out the projects that I would love to do if client briefs and budgets weren't an issue. Uh, and like I say, at the same time, it's just going to develop your own skills. But more importantly, an employer is going to look at that and go, oh wow, okay. Not only has this guy or girl got their university portfolio, he's also getting him head. Not only can we get to see the university portfolio, we can actually see What am I actually trying to say here? Hold on. What I'm trying to say is, if I'm in the position and looking at a potential employee who's looking for work and can see that they can produce 3D imagery of residential projects, they understand how they should look, how they could come together, and how they can benefit our practice, straight away they're gonna be head and shoulders above somebody else that's just shown university work because, let's face it, the university projects are always a little bit more exploratory. You know, you're looking, trying to find the ideas, find the kind of architecture that you want. So doing some more real life examples and, and showing your skills when it comes to whether it be residential, commercial architecture, it's really gonna make you stand out compared to the other people applying. Back to the video. Next, as you'll see me do here, I just decided to add some social icons. I think, I'm not suggesting that they're going to potentially look at your social media pages. If you've got, obviously, social media pages, particularly for your portfolio, I don't see any reason why not. Who knows going to end up looking at this website, they might end up following you and just finding out a little bit more about you. The one thing that I would say is, without a doubt, I've have a LinkedIn icon. I think LinkedIn is one of the most critical social media channels that students can use if they are looking for a job. It's, it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not it's not a necessity to have a social bar at the bottom of the website, but I think for the time that it takes to set up, which is very minimal as you can see. The I mean, I run an Instagram page, we've got to have social links, surely. Wix has an app already set up within the website that you can use, just drag and drop that onto the web page, and then you can just pick and choose which icons you want to have. I then searched for the LinkedIn icon. Um, again, as you could expect, there was just a black LinkedIn icon that matched the remainder of them. I just added that onto the page, uh, deleted some of the ones that I don't use, so Tumblr and Twitter I don't really use, uh, and then obviously I can link that back on the portfolio website so that anybody potentially looking at the website can just find my social pages, just increasing the icon size. Like I say, it's absolutely not a necessity if you don't want to, if you don't have social media pages for your your portfolio of work or you know as a design page shall we say um, but it's just something again I think it's just adding that level of professionalism to the website you know it's not just a blanket website here's my portfolio and that's it you go in the extra mile just to show what you can do um, and I mean the website itself is part of your portfolio at the end of the day you're, you're showcasing your design skills your, your media and web design skills look I don't think anybody's going to particularly employ you because of it but at least you're showing the skills that you've got and what you can do. So when you click on the social links tab, it will take you to the logo. When you click on the logo, very similar to the way that it works with the projects, it will just click what social page is this icon linked to. You then copy and paste the link from your social media page and it is as simple as that. You click done and they are now interactive and ready to go. So here I'm just showing you a preview of the website. You can do this at any point with Wix just by clicking preview if you want to just remove all of the grid lines and see it a little bit more clearly, actually see it in action, which I find really helpful. Um, 
As you can see, the projects tabs are all set up. Um, I just clicked on this one to take you to the architectural placebo. I like this little template because it came with these little square grids on the left hand side that allows somebody to just see a small thumbnail and scroll through the projects that you've got. So what I decided to do is just go back into the architectural placebo site where it was originally part of the template and just copy and paste that across the remainder of the other projects as you'll see me doing here. the completed website as you can see you've got the about section that takes you straight down to the about you've got your contacts area with all your social tabs somebody can fill in that contacts form if they really want to go back up to the top and we've got the various different projects The one thing to bear in mind is there is a mobile mode with Wix which I think is fantastic because it actually allows you to edit the website as it would be on mobile. Now it won't change too much, all of the components will be there from the web element of it but you will just have to go back and just look through as you can see there the text scaling wasn't ideal um, at, the, at the head of the website so just make sure you click on the little phone icon at the top of the web editing page, see there's just some little overlapping elements here where it's overlapping one of the photographs so just start to drag and drop that down. Again it's just as in intuitive as it is with the web page element, it's just that you need to take that into account so that you're not having a, a messy um, mobile website look i think if you are emailing people in the office chances are they're probably going to look at the website on a desktop computer anyway but for the sake of i think this, this took me about five to ten minutes just to go through and make some minor tweaks to make sure that all of the the mobile site was set up and ready to go i mean it is definitely worthwhile just in case somebody is using i don't know an ipad perhaps and to make sure that your mobile website's up to date Again, as you can see here, just checking each of the individual web pages to make sure there are no issues with the, any of the individual pages either. It's certainly something that I do just go through with a fine tooth comb, just make sure that there are no issues. There shouldn't be, but again, you know, when it transfers over onto the mobile site and everything gets a little bit more compact, it's worthwhile just checking because um, the last thing you want to do is have a website that looks messy because that's going to stand out to the employer and actually probably not, not help you out whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is pretty much it. That's the website site all sorted and that just gives you a bit of a whistle stop tour of how to use Wix to create your architectural portfolio. there we have it that is my very quick whistle stop tour of how to turn your architecture portfolio into a website now I know you might be thinking you, that's gone far too quickly it couldn't keep up I, I don't really know what I'm doing still don't worry watch the video over if you need to take your time use the online resources there are people out there far more educated and more knowledgeable than I am that can show you all the various different assets and facets of Wix um, assets and facets it makes sense anyway we're all with it so yeah and that's pretty much it i mean ultimately look i know it's not the best website that i've ever produced but i think it's just to give you an insight of exactly how easy it is to do and even though it's not the best i think you're still going to stand out compared to people that are just cold calling and blanket emailing people with 30 megabyte email attachments to look at the portfolio so yeah if you've got any comments or would like to know anything else let me know in the comments below and we'll try i'll try and respond to everybody as best as i can yeah that's the end of the video make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss another video and i'll see you next week